Hello everyone and welcome to the final episode of my F1 2021 Formula 2 season. This is the round in Abu Dhabi, the title decider with not 2, not 3, not even 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 or 10, but 11 drivers in contention for the championship. It is absolutely ridiculous, uh, albeit some of them are very unlikely, but you can never ever count anyone out in Formula 2. Uh, here are the standings on screen. We lead the way uh, alongside Guan Yu Zhou, Oscar Piastri uh, and Marcus Armstrong not far behind. And uh, realistically, the top seven are the main contenders uh, down through uh, Tictum, Vips uh, and uh, Enzo Fittipaldi. Uh, then you've got Marino Sato and Ben Viscal, probably uh, an outside bet, I would say. Uh, and then uh, the mathematical contenders of Felipe Drogovic and Richard Vashore. Unlikely they will win, but mathematically it's possible, so... Uh, you can not quite count them out just yet. But uh, yeah, it will be very, very interesting uh, to see how this weekend plays out. So uh, without further ado, I think it's time we just get straight into qualifying and uh, see what happens in this final round of the championship here in Abu Dhabi. So strap yourselves in, get some popcorn and a drink, and let's do this. So here we are then for our first flying lap in qualifying. Let's see if we can get a good time on the board. Qualifying will be absolutely crucial in this final round. We cannot afford to have a bad qualifying here. We've been a bit shaky from time to time, so uh, hopefully uh, it is all it all goes to, goes to plan uh, this time as we uh, complete uh, the first sector. No reference points uh, for us yet, as this is our first flying lap. We just have to do the best we can and see as we uh, get very uh, close to cutting that corner there, but we're just about to uh, get away with it now heading down the back straight with the DRS open uh, back straight number one as we head towards the chicane very very wide this straight uh, and uh, we almost get caught out by the track and narrowing up slightly as we uh, head into the braking zone miss the apex there and we're going a little bit deep very easy to do uh, at that part of the circuit but uh, we keep things under control and uh, keep up the momentum through the corner so I don't think that's going to cost us too much uh, in the grand scheme of things as we now head down uh, to the next chicane along the second back straight now into the braking zone uh, running over the curb on the outside to open up the corner now uh, trying to thread the needle through here running a little bit wide on the exit over the curb that might cost us a bit of time as well but uh, we're not going to worry about that as we get the next corner much much more smoothly as uh, now we head into probably the trickiest part of the circuit into this braking zone very easy to uh, run a little bit deep into there we uh, got it just about right on that occasion now uh, into the final four corners uh, of the circuit uh, should be smooth sailing from here as uh, we miss the apex there a little bit but through the final two corners uh, we'll find out uh, where this lap puts us relative uh, to uh, the other lap setters so far as we come around the final corner out on the exit curb though spinning into the wall and out what of qualifying happened? let me know you're okay and we are going to start last in a championship decider where we need to score massive points that is the last thing we needed. Just got a little bit too wide out in the curb. The car uh, just just spun. There was no grip, grip out there. And we were out of qualifying. I'm shocked. The grid is all set for the race tomorrow. But before we go, let's quickly remind ourselves of our top three, which are Schwartzman, Joe, and Yuri Vips. With qualifying complete, all that remains is the main event will be live and uninterrupted for the feature race tomorrow, so make sure you join us then. Well, Robert Schwartzman takes pole position, and that's actually pretty interesting because he's not in the title fight, so uh, that will uh, make uh, the championship more interesting. We don't lose out uh, any points versus any of our rivals. Uh, Joe, uh, second in the championship, or even uh, championship leader with us, uh, will be starting second in the race, so that's not ideal, but he will be scoring big points most likely. Uh, but Piastri third in the championship, he's starting down in 11th, uh, so uh, Piastri down the order, Dan Tictum just getting into the top 10, so he'll be on reverse grid pole, uh, which also isn't great for us, and Marcus Armstrong uh, qualifying 7th, so he'll be up uh, at the pointy end in the first race as well, so we have work to do, so let's just get into it. It's race day for our young drivers here in the United Arab Emirates, where the Yas Marina circuit is about to play host to the Abu Dhabi Formula 2 race. Let's get started. Yas Marina Circuit is a 3.4 mile racetrack built on the man-made Yas Island. In addition to the 21 corners, it features two very long straights 
Now these will be the driver's main overtaking chances today into turn eight and turn 11. I'm sitting here quite emotional next to my friend Davide Valsecchi. Here we are at the end of the F2 calendar and the atmosphere is electric. I have no doubt that the drivers will be giving it everything they have out there today. I can't wait to get underway. Hey Alex, you are absolutely right. It's a very special place. This is a track like no other, an event like no other, a jewel in the crown of Formula 2. It's perfect. I think we are in for a fantastic racing event here. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. I will try my best not to let you down, but it's going to be tough, starting all the way down the back. Our target realistically has to be to get into the top 10 uh, so we can get a reverse grid pole uh, for race 2. That is the only way we are going to save our championship. So here we go then to the 5 red lights. And it's lights out and away we go for the first race of the Abu Dhabi weekend. It's a good start for us as we head down towards the first corner. We take the inside line late on the brakes. We need to be aggressive and gain positions here. So we're going to just try everything we can to force our way uh, through the field as quickly as possible. And we've already moved ourselves uh, up a number of positions into 18th. Four places gained through turn one. Now as we head into the chicane. Can we gain some more here down the inside? We can, but we're just going to be very cautious here as uh, we didn't have a lot of space to work with. Uh, we only end up gaining one more place. We go down the inside again though, trying to force our way through the field, force the issue down the inside and a bit of a slide on the exit means we uh, lose out uh, to Felipe Dragovic, but we do overtake uh, David Beckman in the Campos uh, behind us. He's still looking uh, for a move though. Beckman is fairly close. Uh, so we're going to uh, just stay to the left and uh, make sure we cover that off. But we're going to turn that into an overtaking chance down the inside. And uh, we'll get the move done on Felipe Drogovic into the chicane around the outside of the right-hander. And we get through uh, against the Brazilian driver. And now we shift our attentions forwards uh, once again. You have P15, P15. Lawson is ahead of you. Less than a second separate you. Drogovic behind. Pit strategy complete. See these tyres through to the end now, 22 laps to go. And uh, not quite close enough to Lawson uh, to make a move down the inside into uh, the next chicane, but uh, we will push on. We actually lost a bit of time there as we uh, went a bit wide on the exit, but uh, we push on uh, nonetheless. And uh, we'll see if we can uh, close the gap uh, to Lawson once again. We've moved our way up into 15th position on the first lap, so seven places gained. We only need another five to get a reverse grid pole, so I'm feeling optimistic at this point that we can do it, but of course, uh, lap one overtakes are much, much easier uh, than uh, overtakes on any other lap, so uh, it's going to be difficult uh, from here, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, we're going to need to be aggressive uh, to make these overtakes work. You can see we're a long way behind Lawson, but uh, we're going to have a look anyway. Go down the inside, and we will make the move on Liam Lawson and uh, move ourselves up into 14th position uh, with a purple Great first maneuver. sector. You made it look easy. Uh, though it is only lap two, so uh, I think basically everyone uh, should be getting those uh, at this point as uh, so we continue to push on though. We do catch up to Jay Darubala, so we do have good pace, uh, at least in the early phases of this race. Uh, I am pushing quite hard, so uh, the tyres may be feeling it uh, at the end, but uh, there's no point uh, conserving the tyres uh, when we don't have the track position yet. So uh, we are uh, slowly uh, beginning to take that back. All the ground that we lost in qualifying uh, is uh, starting to come back to us. And, uh, yep, here we go. And, uh, yeah, Piastri is up next, so we're going to see if we can make the same move we did on Liam Lawson, uh, and we'll see if we can make the move to the inside as we head towards the chicane. We're going to go down the inside. Piastri defends a little bit. We have to react, and we're very late on the brakes and almost into the back of Robert Schwartzman. Thankfully, we avoid any contact there, uh, but we managed to get ahead of Piastri, and uh, next up, uh, as I mentioned, is Rob Schwartzman. But uh, both the Prima cars losing a place off the start, so uh, not been a good uh, good start to the race for them. But uh, nonetheless, we push on and we go down the other side of Schwartzman. And that was a very late defensive move by Robert Schwartzman, and we just about avoid any kind of collision there. But uh, that was a very, very aggressive and late defense uh, by the Russian driver. And uh, we 
Uh, thankfully, we were able to avoid any incident there. Now he's trying to come back at us, though, but the uh, Russian driver will run out of straight. Uh, and he won't have time to catch up as we go a little bit deep uh, in defense there, but uh, nonetheless, we keep things under control and uh, continue to push on. Next car up ahead of us is uh, the other Campos car of Ralph Boschel, who is running up in the points at the moment. Let's see if uh, we can get ahead of him and uh, take reverse grid pole for ourselves as we go to the outside of Ralph Bosham and uh, it's job done uh, ahead of the Swiss driver and moving ourselves nice move. Uh, up and uh, into the top 10. So uh, we've done our job for this race, any further progress uh, it will be just a bonus, the top 8 score points but uh, we will get 2 bonus points for our fastest lap uh, as things stand so uh, still uh, plenty uh, to play for in this one as we go around the outside of Teo Porcher and move ourselves up into ninth position. So uh, now we are knocking on the door of the points and up ahead of us is Guan Yu Zhou. He's gained a couple of spots uh, from the start, I think. Uh, yeah, he started, he would have started ninth. So he's gained a spot uh, from uh, his grid slot. So uh, he's done well, but uh, we are going to see if we can do better uh, and overtake him. But uh, he's uh, doing a good job of defending so far. We couldn't quite get through there and uh, a decent exit here might be what we need. Uh, with DRS now open, can we make the move on Guan Yu Zhou as we head uh, down towards the triple chicane? Where are we going to go? We're going to have a look to the inside. Joe defends, but we're late on the brakes and we make the move stick on Guan Yu Zhou, and uh, that moves us up and into the nice top work. eight that brings you up the place. Uh, and into the points uh, in this one. So uh, that is perfect. So we just need to continue push on with this, uh, and uh, there is a replay uh, of that move. Uh, you can see we were able to uh, get through ahead of Guan Yu Zhou and uh, that is one of our championship rivals behind us. Meanwhile, David Beckman, uh, we passed him quite early on in this race and uh, he is now out with a mechanical failure. I think we literally passed him uh, in the second sector uh, on that one. But uh, we continue on. It is a big slide for us and uh, that was uh, literally right after looking at that replay. Uh, I, I uh, made that mistake and we dropped back down into 10th position so uh, that all that hard work uh, we've just lost a chunk of it but crucially uh, we're still on reverse grid pole so we still have uh, achieved our main target for this race but uh, still I would prefer to have a little bit more so we go down the inside and make the move Teo Porcher sees us coming and uh, we get through eventually but we go wide Teo Porcher is going to get a switch back here as we're all over the place on the curb there and Teo Porcher gets back through this is a fantastic fight with Porcher but it's not what I need I need to be catching the cars in front so here we go then along the start finish straight it's a very short run but it's a good enough exit for us that we're able to go down the inside of Teo Porcher and we make the move stick for the switch back a mega switch back by the Frenchman that was fantastic and he gets back through what a move for Teo Porcher and we're still in 10th position we've made 3 or 4 attempts of trying to pass him now and none of them have come off but uh, eventually uh, along the back straight more traditional uh, passing opportunity surely uh, we'll be able to get the job done here as uh, he defends we go to the outside late on the brakes and we should be able to get this done we just about get the car pulled up and uh, we make the move stick this time uh, on Teo Porcher but although it's got a decent exit I think we'll have enough to hold on uh, on this occasion and uh, we continue on uh, to uh, what is now the uh, final lap of the race that was all the action uh, for this first one of the weekend uh, and it looks like we're going to come away uh, with ninth position Guan Yu Zhou 8th putting a lot of pressure on Richard for sure but not quite able to get uh, an overtake done on the Dutchman as up ahead Dan Tictum wins the first race in Abu Dhabi and hauls himself into proper title contention. He takes the lead of the championship as he crosses the line at a leisurely pace there. Just uh, showing off uh, how dominant he was in this first race of the weekend. It's a fantastic drive for Dan Tictum and he is now the favourite in the championship. We come around the final corner and we will do enough to start on the front row in the reverse grid race. Right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. Oof. That was tough. But we got through. We achieved our goal of finishing in the top 10. And we are back in the fight. Carlin have pulled off a sublime performance to secure the top step of the podium today. And Davide Valsecchi, give me your thoughts. How did they accomplish this result? It was down to one thing. Consistent pace over everyone else out there on the track. 
we could spend a great deal of time talking about race and tire strategy, what has occurred on the track, but at the end of the day, the difference here was down to simply being faster on track than everyone else. Amazing skill on show. As we can see, it's time for the podium, and I can see the Carlin team underneath our commentary box going crazy as their driver walks out. It was a great win, and it means a great deal to this team. So, Dan Tickton takes the championship lead with a win in sprint race one in Abu Dhabi. Christian Lungard, not in the championship fight, finishes in second position, and Bent Biscal keeps his hopes alive with P3. It's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. Daniel Tictum takes over the lead of the Drivers' Championship after that excellent result. And now a look at the team stats. The lead at the top comes down after a strong weekend from the challenging pack. Meanwhile, Carlin moved up the table with another strong performance this weekend. After all this drama, you'll be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. Well, Dan Tictum into the championship lead, Marcus Armstrong up to second position, uh, just sneaking the points in there, finishing fourth uh, and doing the job uh, and keeping himself in contention. We drop to third ahead of Guan Yu Zhou. We actually overtake uh, or, or gain a point uh, on the Chinese driver despite finishing behind him. We have the fastest lap uh, worth two points. He finished eighth uh, worth one point, uh, so that's the reason for that. Uh, Yuri Vips uh, and Oscar Piastri still uh, close enough in points to be in contention but uh, Piastri with uh, how uh, low, lowly he qualified uh, will be tough uh, for him to, uh, to to keep the fight going uh, especially in the final race when he uh, will be starting down in 11th uh, and I think in the, even in the second race he didn't make it in or in this race he didn't make it into the top 10 uh, which means he won't be uh, starting in the top 10 uh, for race 2 so yeah, it's going to be tough for him to even score points this weekend, I think, but we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, that's uh, a bit of a uh, tough luck for him. Enzo Fittipaldi, I think, probably out of contention now, um, realistically. Uh, he qualified badly this weekend, and uh, it's something you just can't get away with in the final round. So I think it's championship over for Fittipaldi. Still, again, mathematically possible, uh, as with Bent Miscal and Marino Sato, uh, mathematically possible as well. So... It's never over till it's over, but uh, yeah, that is the uh, current state of play. But uh, realistically, I think it's going to be uh, between myself, Dan Tictum, uh, Marcus Armstrong, Guan Yu Zhou, uh, and Yuri Vips, I think are uh, the main contenders. But that's still five, uh, which is still insane uh, with just two uh, races to go uh, in the season. But uh, yeah, let's talk about this race a little bit. Uh, we managed to fight our way through the field well. Uh, we probably could have got another couple of places if uh, I didn't make that mistake uh, at uh, uh, just after the uh, triple chicane at the end of the second uh, back straight. Uh, just lost the rear end and uh, spun uh, across the grass or half spun. Uh, again, again, we managed to save it without losing too much, but yeah, definitely lost a few places there. And uh, towards the end, I think my tires were going off. Uh, obviously, I used them quite hard at the start. Uh, and uh, yeah, we started losing pace at the end and I wasn't able to make uh, any more moves uh, the way I was at the start of the race. But uh, nonetheless, very happy with uh, the day's work and uh, it means we have uh, a uh, red hot chance of winning uh, sprint race two. And uh, that is now the target uh, to get us back in the championship fight. So let's do it. Welcome then to the United Arab Emirates, our F2 drivers are on the grid and we're moments away from lights out for the start of the Formula 2 Abu Dhabi race. So the Yas Marina circuit offers 21 corners and a lap distance of around 3.4 miles. There are a few opportunities to pass with long straights and DRS zones in two places, turns 8 and 11. Plenty of close racing then, plenty of speed and plenty of excitement for the fans, no doubt. All right, so here we are on the grid then for the second sprint race in Abu Dhabi. Cloudy conditions, slightly cloudy. Uh, clouds are clearing towards the end. Uh, but this is our big chance this weekend. We need to maximize our points in this race because uh, we will be behind the eight ball 
uh, in the final uh, race of the weekend where the big points are handed out that we're going to be right back uh, to last place on the grid. So this is our big chance. We need to have a lights to flag victory. There's nothing less uh, that will do for us in this race. Keep an eye on the lights. The start sequence will begin as soon as the grid has formed. Be ready with the clutch. So let's get ready to go for Sprint Race 2 in Abu Dhabi. Quite possibly the most important race of the championship for us as we now go to the five red lights. And it's lights out and away we go for Sprint Race 2 in Abu Dhabi. It's a fantastic start and we're going to take the lead easily as we head down towards Turn 1. We take it from Teo Porcher and lead the way as we exit Turn 1. And now we just need to drive as fast as we can for 22 laps around this circuit and we will be fully in contention for the championship. We need these points uh, as much as anyone else. So let's do this. Let's make sure we get this race win in the bag. As you can see, you're already running a little bit wide there uh, through the uh, hairpin. Uh, I didn't mention it, but on the formation lap this time in particular, uh, I usually make an effort to make sure the tires are in the right temperature range, but this time uh, I uh, made absolutely certain that I warmed them up properly uh, and made absolutely certain that they were out, that they would be perfect for the start of this race and it worked for us as uh, we had massive grip and we're already pulling away uh, with our tyres in the correct window but as we continue on it's not going to be smooth sailing as you can see Teo Porcher catches up to us uh, a number of laps later and uh, we have to defend uh, into the chicane thankfully we're able to hold on and uh, hopefully uh, we can get our head down and push away uh, there's a reason I don't really have these uh, lights to flag victories where I lead the whole race is because I tend to lose concentration when uh, I'm not uh, you know, chasing a, a particular target in front of me and uh, Teo Porcher going for the move up the inside there very unorthodox place to go for and I think he may, may have made uh, a little bit of contact uh, you can see he's quite a long way back just goes for a big old lunge down the inside barges his way uh, into the side of us but not able to get the move done uh, evidently uh, and he'll be lucky if he didn't get damage from that but uh, as we continue on uh, through the chicane, uh, we get a yellow flag behind us. Uh, I wonder what that's for. Uh, someone uh, running into some trouble uh, back there. It's Guan Yu Zhou, the Chinese driver. He's spun off the road into the chicane there. And you can hear the whole field going by. He rejoins the circuit uh, alongside the uh, Cheroos cars there. But Guan Yu Zhou, a massive mistake for the Chinese driver. What happened here? We go on board. Uh, with Joe to see uh, what was going on. He goes to the outside of Teo Porcher to try and make the move all the way around the outside but a bit too much power down and the car loops and he is off the road and watches the world go by and watches the championship slip away out of his fingertips. That is very unfortunate for Guan Yu Joe. He gets going again and uh, rejoins the circuit and uh, causes the Sharoos cars to scatter a bit there but that is a disaster for Guan Yu Joe and he is uh, now really on the back foot in this championship. That definitely helps us though. I was very concerned about the points Hulk Zhou uh, would get uh, from this weekend. And uh, now uh, it evens the odds a bit. Uh, so let's see how it plays out. But that pretty much ruins uh, Guan Yu Zhou's chance of getting points in this race. He's well out of the top 10 now. And uh, yeah, he has a plenty of work to do. So uh, we'll see what he can do. But uh, it's not looking promising uh, for Guan Yu Zhou. Let's see, he can't even uh, hold that position ahead of uh, the Shrews cars. He slots in between them. Uh, but uh, meanwhile, up ahead, this is Richard Bashore going for the move around the outside of Teo Porcher. Bashore uh, fighting through the chicane and he gets through. That's Marino Sato uh, in behind. Let's see what Sato can do. Remember, he is uh, on the edge of championship contention, so uh, this could be important for him to get some moves done here as uh, he goes to the outside and makes the move on Teo Porcher as well uh, does Marino Sato. A bit of contact there potentially uh, with Porcher as the Frenchman popped over the curbs on the inside, but Marino Sato gets through and uh, Porcher has to slot in behind. Uh, here's a replay of that uh, from the offboard. What you didn't see is Yuri Vips in the background there trying to go to the outside of Sato, but uh, Porcher, uh, I don't think, wasn't aware that Vips was out there, pushes Sato to the edge of the circuit, and Vips uh, had to uh, had to back out and slot in behind, so uh, Vips not able to make the move there. Uh, in fact, he's the onboard with Vips, and you'll be able to see 
uh, a lot clearly, a lot more clearly what happened. Vips was already going to the outside of Sato as Porcher was actually potentially looking for a move uh, on the shore as well. It was all uh, a bit uh, chaotic there, but in the end, uh, Sato was the one to gain a position ahead of Porcher and Vips uh, had to just stay exactly where he was, uh, but I'm sure he'll eventually uh, be able to make that move. Meanwhile, uh, up ahead, uh, Marino Sato is going on with it. He's going to make the move around the outside of Richard Bashaw. This is a brave one, and he's going to keep the fight going through the chicane. Around the outside, left the inside line for the right-hander, but they still keep the fight going side by side. This is fantastic stuff, and Sato gets through. And now Porcher is going to come back at Richard Bashaw. Porcher, I thought he was on the back foot, but he's now on the attack once again to the outside of Richard Bashaw. Can he get the move done on the Dutchman, the Frenchman around the outside? And Yuri Vips again just has to watch on as the two cars ahead fight away. Porcher and Bashaw really scrapping hard here through the final sector. But Porcher is going to get the traction on the exit. Bashaw has to slot in behind, I think. And uh, they're still fighting side by side. Bashaw around the outside just about slots in in between Porcher and Vips. And uh, that was a great scrap between those two. Fantastic stuff. But uh, as we continue on, uh, I think Bashaw... Uh, may have uh, made a bit of contact during that battle because he is now uh, really slow. Porcher, you can see, pulling away and Vips to the outside, breaking on the curb, trying to make the move stick. And he's made a brave uh, overtake there as he tries to just keep the nose in on the inside. Yuri Vips with good traction on the exit. He'll have the DRS advantage and he'll get through. And now Ben Viscal is on the outside of Richard Vashaw. So Vashaw definitely has an issue as now the two Dutchmen go wheel to wheel as they head uh, towards the next chicane. Around the outside goes Ben Viscal and he'll surely get the move done here as he gets very tight on the apex. But Ben Viscal gets through ahead of Richard Vashaw and uh, that is job done uh, for Bent Viscal. The Trident's running well here. Meanwhile, uh, there is uh, Dan Tictum. He's charged his way through the field, and this one made plenty of overtakes, and here's another one round the outside of Richard Vashaw, and uh, that is job done uh, rather easily for Dan Tictum, and uh, he is looking very, very strong in this final round, but Richard Vashaw has the DRS advantage and now goes to the outside of Dan Tictum. Can Richard Vashaw re-overtake Dan Tictum? Round the outside he goes, but he can't quite get there, and Dan Tictum's going to hold on just about, but Richard Vashaw fighting hard in this one. Meanwhile, we've got another car trying to make the move. Round the outside now of uh, Teo Porcher it goes Yuri Vips, and Yuri Vips will get to the inside. He should just be able to squeeze through here, and does so, and that is Yuri Vips up. Uh, another position, great stuff there, uh, up into uh, I think third uh, for Yuri Vips, not sure, I've kind of lost track at this point where everyone is, but uh, that is job done as he just about manages uh, to defend the position uh, ahead of Teo Porcher and Ben Viscal, uh, I believe that is the top five uh, with Marino Sato in second position, we obviously still uh, lead the way. Now Ben Viscal to the outside of Teo Porcher, so they're really scrapping away hard uh, in the uh, minor placings here. And this is Ben Viscal trying to take fourth position uh, from Teo Porcher. So uh, Porcher did look all right for a while, but uh, now it seems like he's going backwards uh, once again. Uh, so that's unfortunate uh, for Porcher. Now that was very close as Porcher has to really try and defend hard uh, from Dan Tictum. Tickton was really uh, trying to make that move but just wasn't able to find any space and Porcher uh, almost chopped his nose off but now Tickton uh, on the next lap will make the move to the outside of Teo Porcher and this should be job done uh, for Dan Tickton now as uh, he's able to get through and uh, make the move stick on Porcher and that's another couple of points uh, for Dan Tickton so he's making great progress. Uh, in this race and uh, he will be very very happy with the way uh, this championship is unfolding at the moment he's uh, looking in very good stead at the moment but uh, we'll uh, come back to that uh, between this race and the final one to see where uh, everyone truly stands here is Marcus Armstrong now uh, looking for a move as he uh, goes to the outside of Teo Porcher and Marcus Armstrong is going to get through around the outside. We go on board with Teo Porcher and Marcus Armstrong again, just chipping away and uh, getting the points. Uh, and that is exactly what he needs to do uh, with his position in the championship. So uh, that, that's great stuff for Marcus Armstrong. And uh, now that's an issue for uh, uh, Roy Nassani. Okay, uh, I panicked for a second. That was a dams car, but it was his teammate, Roy Nassani, that was retiring, not Marcus Armstrong. Uh, himself uh, but 
there you go. That is Rodasani out of the race. No safety car uh, for that. But uh, meanwhile for us, it has been a very quiet race. Uh, we've been able to stretch the margin with all the fighting behind. Uh, we've just been getting further and further in front. And uh, it's actually going to, in the end, be a relatively easy race for us. And uh, we're going to come around the final corner to take the race win here as we drift it around. Race win in Sprint Race 2 in Abu Dhabi. That is crucial for us. Fantastic. You've won the Grand Prix. My goodness, did we need that. We are back in the fight fully now. We should be back in the championship lead. We just need to do the work in the feature race. Well, that may not have been the finest race in history, but there's no question that was a critical win. And I have to wonder, Davide Valsecchi, just what set them apart from the competition here? This race, this win, was about one thing and one thing only. Consistency. Anyone can be quick for just one lap, but there's a difference between that and being quick every lap, over and over and over. If you can do that, if you can gain ground when your opponents make mistakes, but then not make mistakes on your own, you can just push and push. And as the adrenaline dies down after another eventful race, here come our top three out onto the podium. So we take the win here for Sprint Race 2 in Abu Dhabi. Marino Sato finishes in second position with Yuri Vips in third. And now let's take a look at the driver's stand. Jack Aiken takes over the lead of the driver's championship after that excellent result. On to the teams then. Trident move to the top of the table. Meanwhile, High Tech GP's strong weekend allows them to continue their march up the table. After all this drama, you'll be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. Well, just one race to go and we're back in control of the championship up in the lead. Uh, but only a handful of points, three to be precise, uh, ahead of Dan Tictum. And that's not much, to be honest. Uh, I would appreciate uh, a few more, but uh, thankfully for us, Dan Tictum will be starting in 10th in the next race. So uh, the chances of him scoring big points are not as high as uh, some others, uh, like Juan Yu Zhou, who are a little bit further down the, uh, down the championship order. In fact, the top five in the championship uh, I think reversed of where they are starting uh, relative to each other on the grid uh, in the final race. Uh, so that makes for a very, very uh, interesting prospect uh, in, in the last race. So yeah, I, ha I haven't done the math yet on you know what happens if we all finish uh, where we start, but I imagine it will be very close uh, between almost everyone. So uh, I think we'll all be equally uh, fighting to move forwards. Uh, in in the final race, it could just be a matter of who who can overtake the most cars and, and just do the best uh, they can uh, in the finale. So, yeah, I think everyone uh, has a, a fair, in the top five has a fairly equal chance of winning. I think Piastri is still mathematically in contention. Uh, unfortunately, we've lost uh, Sato uh, and uh, Viscal uh, from the title fight, uh, as well as Fittipaldi. Um, who, like I said, I don't think was really ever uh, in it uh, after the bad qualifying he had. But uh, nonetheless, uh, mathematically now there are just six contenders left. Uh, but like I said, Piastri just barely uh, staying in contention mathematically and starting down in 11th position. It's going to be tough, but we have seen crazy things before in F2, so you never know. Uh, but... Let's just uh, get into it, I think, and uh, get the final race of the championship underway and uh, get this championship sorted. This has already been a, a long video and we've got a whole feature race to go. So, yeah, let's just get into it and uh, decide this championship once and for all. It's race day for our young drivers here in the United Arab Emirates where the Yas Marina circuit is about to play host to the Abu Dhabi Formula 2 race. Let's get started. Yas Marina circuit is a 3.4 mile racetrack built on the man-made Yas Island. 
In addition to the 21 corners, it features two very long straights. Now these will be the driver's main overtaking chances today into turn eight and turn 11. I'm sitting here quite emotional next to my friend Davide Valsecchi. Here we are at the end of the F2 calendar and the atmosphere is electric. I have no doubt that the drivers will be giving it everything they have out there today. I can't wait to get underway. Hey Alex, you are absolutely right. It's a very special place. This is a track like no other, an event like no other, a jewel in the crown of Formula 2. It's perfect. I think we are in for a fantastic racing event here. Here is the grid for today's race, which will be starting shortly. Robert Schwartzman lines up on pole position, with Guan Yu Zhou alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Vips, Porcher, Marino Sato, and Vishor, Armstrong, Fiscal, Lungard, Daniel Tictum, Piastri, Boschon, Liam Lawson, and Deruvela, Dragovic, Nisani, Zendeli, and David Beckman, Samaya, a Charus, De Leda, and Jack Aitken rounds off the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So I was too curious. I had to do the maths. Uh, so if we all finish where we start, uh, we will be on 145 points. Guan Yu Zhou will be on 145 points. Yuri Vips will be on 144. Dan Tickton will be on 143. Armstrong. Uh, back a little bit on 139 uh, and like I said Piastri uh, it would be very difficult for him to win the championship but the wild card at the bottom faster slap is worth two points that could make the difference uh, here so there is the situation that is if we finish where we start if Guan Yu Zhou takes the lead all of a sudden he's up to 152 points and that makes the job so much harder for the rest of us because he is on the front row so uh, any positions gained for Guan Yu Zhou uh, will be just that one into the lead and that's a big points gain so uh, that is a wild card uh, as well but uh, now let's just get into it to the five red lights and it's lights out and away we go everyone starting on the harder available compound finishing the race on the softer as we get a good start and immediately go to the inside it's three from three in terms of our starts here in Abu Dhabi which is perfect for us as we make the move down the inside and we immediately gain several places through the opening couple of corners very aggressive there and making a bit of contact but uh, I think we get away with uh, no damage there as we move ourselves up into 15th position already we go down the inside and try and make some more as we head through the chicane apologies for the little uh, jump in time there that's just best best I could do uh, I didn't have the uh, any recording of that in, in the middle bit but uh, anyway uh, that's unfortunate but we make moves and move ourselves up into 12th position now we've gained 10 places in the opening sector of this race that is fantastic and we have immediately forced ourselves back into the fight and now we can try and get some points uh, because uh, I'm not sure uh, where things stand in terms of uh, with Guan Yu Zhou who has more wins I don't know so far in this championship uh, and our car is completely fine we didn't damage our car with all those uh, aggressive overtakes so yeah I don't want to risk it I don't want to, to tie in the championship with Guan Yu Zhou I want to make sure we beat him and that means we need to finish in the top 10 uh, so let's go for it and see if we can make uh, some overtakes we get another one on the exit of the chicane uh, really attraction there for us and uh, that is uh, the move made on Jane Deruvela and we move ourselves up into a letter nice move good job and uh, I'm making a big effort uh, to make overtakes now because I am not confident we will have good pace on the super softs I'm always more confident on the harder compound tires especially uh, in Formula 2 so uh, I'm hoping that we can make a progress now and just maintain our position later uh, in the second stint, uh, which thankfully for me is much, much shorter as we go down the inside and almost make contact with the back of the Trident car there. But we managed to just about uh, keep it all under control and avoid ramming into the back of Bent Viscal. But, uh, no tight concerns at the moment, just focus on the driving. That is Dan Tictum uh, now behind us, and uh, that is one title contender. Uh, we, shouldn't, stand, we'll be second in the championship. Uh, we shouldn't need to worry about him, but uh, second in the championship at the moment. So uh, that means to say uh, that Guan Yu Zhou has taken the lead 
of the race, off the start. That is not what we what we needed, and that's made our job so much harder. Instead of a top ten, we're going to need uh, probably a top six, uh, uh, roughly. Uh, not sure on the maths uh, at the moment, but uh, we're going to need a, a decent chunk of points uh, if we want to beat Guan Yu Zhou now. Uh, we did not want him to take the lead of this race uh, for our sake, but uh, he has put himself into the best possible position. Uh, we don't have the fastest lap at the moment. Uh, that will come later uh, for everyone. Uh, the chance of the fastest lap will come later uh, when we switch to the super soft tyres for the end of the race. But uh, yeah, that's, that's not a big concern for now, but uh, right now, uh, we're just stuck in traffic and we need to find our way through. We're, we've only got one point next to our name at the moment, so we're currently about six points behind Guan Yu Zhou, uh, fastest lap excluded. So uh, we're going to need to make more moves if we want to call ourselves contenders once again. Uh, so let's see if we can do it. Uh, we've got Bent Viscal in front of us, uh, where you've had a bit of a nightmare through there, so we're not going to overtake him anytime soon. But uh, the next lap will be the target. We need to find our way through. Uh, and uh, yeah, we need to make moves while we still have the tyre advantage. Uh, I'm never, I've okay, never been particularly kind 10. on my tyres, I'll admit, so uh, that's why I want to make an impression early because uh, we're going to lose pace towards the end of the stint as we were actually pushing uh, Ben Viscal through turn one there. And we're now really uh, aggressively uh, looking for places to go and we make the move up the inside of Ben Viscal and uh, get through uh, ahead of the Dutchman. And uh, that is us up into ninth position, uh, two points against our name, but still second in the championship. To guarantee uh, the championship win, uh, we are going to need a top five. Then it doesn't matter uh, if we miss out on the fastest lap. I don't want to leave that uh, up to chance. Uh, I believe seventh uh, with the fastest lap uh, should also uh, be enough, but I don't want to risk that as we make the move. Uh, and get ahead you made it look easy. of uh, Marcus Armstrong and uh, that is us uh, up and into 8th position so uh, we're getting there, we're close uh, to our target and still making moves but uh, we don't have lightning pace uh, I feel like you know, not like we had earlier in the weekend as uh, we catch up to Marino Sato who is uh, defending all the way to the inside and uh, follows us back uh, towards the racing line. We go around the outside of Marino Sato, who's very late on the brakes. So Sato fighting to the very end here. He doesn't care that he's out of the championship fight. He's still fighting us like he is. But uh, nonetheless, we move ourselves up and into seventh position. Next up is Christian Lungard. He's defending all the way to the inside as well, so we have to make another switch to the outside late. On the brakes, too late. We have to take avoiding action not to smash into the back of Yuri Vips. And we lose out not just to Lungard, but also to Marino Sato, who gets back through. And we're down once again and into eighth position. That was uh, championship thinking there. I maybe could have got away with uh, not taking the avoiding action there, I will admit, uh, in retrospect. But... Uh, I did not want to take that risk and uh, potentially damage the car in this race. That is the last thing uh, we need. Uh, we've got plenty of time uh, to make these overtakes again. Uh, so let's just keep things calm and uh, go for it once again. As we now go around the outside of Marino Sato into the chicane. That's a new one, but we get the move done. Uh, nonetheless, uh, in a slightly uh, unusual way, uh, we knew, still need to fight this one uh, through the hairpin, but we will get the job done on the exit and get ahead of Marino Sato uh, and uh, now push on once again to try and catch up uh, to Christian Lungard. There you go. And uh, there you go. Uh, confirmation, 7th uh, place and the fastest lap will be enough to win the championship, but I'm not confident that we can keep this. Like I said, uh, I'm never particularly comfortable in the softer compound and that is of course uh, where the fastest laps of the race uh, will be set so I don't want to have to bank uh, on, uh, on getting the fastest lap uh, if we are not guaranteed to come away with it but uh, nonetheless we continue to fight through and we make an absolutely brilliant switchback on Christian Lungard that was absolutely perfect and we get the job done easily on no the Dane and uh, that moves us up and into 6th position in this one so uh, now uh, so long as Guan Yu Zhou doesn't get the fastest lap uh, it is enough but uh, again I don't want to bank on that Guan Yu Zhou very well could get the fastest lap and he wins the championship but uh, here is confirmation as well of the uh, running order 
Uh, Joe leads the way ahead of Vashaw. Robert Schwartzman has dropped a third uh, off the start, uh, followed by Teo Porcher, Yuri Vips, uh, and then it is myself in sixth position. So uh, that is the, the running order of uh, the top uh, group of cars in this race. So uh, Robert Schwartzman, uh, despite taking pole, not having the race pace as we go down the inside of Vips, but again we go too deep. Vips defended very late there and we had to avoid him, uh, and that ruined our uh, braking zone there, and uh, we just couldn't stop the car efficiently. Uh, while swerving to avoid the Estonian uh, and uh, he uh, maintains the position. Uh, we don't actually lose too much time thankfully uh, so uh, hopefully uh, we can just get on with the job uh, once again as again we go late on the brakes this time we force the car down the inside and Vips has no defense this time as uh, we make the move around the outside of the next corner and uh, Vips has to slot in behind and uh, that is job done and we are up into fifth championship hours if we hold this position and our radio is just not working at the moment uh, but here is the leader Guan Yu Zhou and uh, it doesn't look like he's going to be challenged anytime soon he's got a gap to the car behind and uh, he is just doing the business and doing uh, what he needs to uh, doing everything he can uh, but that is an issue for Enzo uh, Fittipaldi so uh, a bad weekend uh, it gets even worse as one of the title earlier title contenders uh, is now out of the race unfortunate and that's another one oh that's a big engine blow out there a lot of smoke uh, out of the back of that one and that's Ben Viscal so another former title contender Hitler out of this one so uh, it was just never meant to be uh, for those two unfortunately as uh, they uh, weren't in the fight anymore but uh, yeah even if they were uh, it would not have lasted uh, the distance in this one so that's unfortunate for those two uh, but nonetheless we continue to push on uh, where we weren't able to make any more overtakes uh, in this phase of the race uh, and we come into the pits uh, to make our uh, one and only stop and uh, this is very late in the race uh, on that 22 of 31 remember uh, we're starting on the harder available compound uh, which means uh, we we also are uh, you know pitting quite late uh, in the race and finishing on the softer. That's why it's a bit of an unusual strategy uh, for this final round. And uh, being held up there by Marino Sato, uh, who was entering pit lane, obviously no fault of his, uh, but uh, a little frustrating nonetheless. We've just lost uh, around a second or so maybe. Uh, in that so that's unfortunate but anyway we will push on and uh, see what we can do in this race like I said fifth place uh, is good enough regardless of who gets the fastest lap I'm just hoping that didn't cost us uh, fifth place we'll find out as uh, we come past the pit lane on the next lap as everyone else makes their stops and uh, we do thankfully regain pit, fifth so position the uh, so there was no loss uh, of time there so uh, really the key now is uh, if we can get the fastest lap of the race uh, and that will 100% put it beyond doubt um, and we shouldn't have too much to worry about but uh, let's see we're going to push on and see if we can do it as uh, we now uh, wind our way through the first sector and uh, this is our fastest lap attempt we need to do it while the tyres are fresh because they uh, being the super soft compound will drop off relatively quickly so uh, we need to do this early in the stint otherwise we won't have the tyre performance uh, to be able to pull this off. We've got margin uh, to cars uh, all around us. Uh, we're in a world of our own, really. See these tyres through to the end now, 8 laps to go. And as you can hear there, race leader 14 seconds ahead. 7 of those uh, are just to Schwartzman, so I don't think we're catching up to anyone uh, by the end of this race. Robert Schwartzman, I think, is just out of our reach at the moment. Uh, Teo Porcher uh, running in the podium places, uh, and obviously uh, Guan Yu Zhou leading the way. No issues with tyre wear for now. Keep taking care of them. So. Yeah, that is uh, how things stand at the front. I think Richard Vashaw is still in second position uh, as well uh, while I'm at it. But uh, two purple sectors so far in this lap and things are looking good for us as we are trying uh, to get that purple lap time. Uh, at the moment it goes uh, to Guan Yu Zhou 
Uh, so let's see if we can beat it as we now come to the final corner a little bit deep and missing the apex by miles there. But let's see if it's cost us as we come to the line. Fastest lap for us. And that is a relief to get that in the books. Uh, because I uh, am not confident, uh, even with uh, a decent gap behind us, uh, that we'll be able to hold on. But uh, thankfully, the letter has not had a good run this weekend, unfortunately for our teammate. But uh, thankfully, we do manage to hold on. Uh, there were times where uh, Lungard uh, behind us uh, would begin to catch up, but uh, uh, he would never got particularly close. I think he did get within three seconds on occasion, but that's really about uh, as close as he's been. Uh, and then uh, whenever that happened, uh, we've uh, been able to push away. Uh, once again so uh, thankfully for us we've had just about the pace uh, to hold off Lungard but uh, meanwhile the cars ahead have been getting further and further ahead uh, Robert Schwartzman has gained four seconds on us uh, in this last stint so uh, that is uh, why it was so important to make the progress early in this race uh, when our uh, soft compound tyres uh, were in good, con good condition uh, and we're able to uh, make the moves early but uh, yeah we did the job then and uh, now unbelievably after qualifying in last position crashing out in qualifying not even setting a lap time we are staring down the barrel of a championship win here in formula 2 the mistake from Guan Yu Zhou was very very costly in the earlier sprint race and that is what has cost him the championship otherwise I think he, we wouldn't have had a chance but that's the way it goes uh, you need to be consistent uh, as much as possible no one has been consistent over this season it has just been utter chaos and different drivers getting podiums and wins throughout the whole thing but Guan Yu Zhou is going to be the final winner of the season he comes around the final corner he's done all he can on the last day of Formula 2 racing he crosses the line to win but it won't quite be enough for him to take the championship that is going to come our way as we come around the final few corners it may only be for a fifth place finish but it's the most important fifth place of the season it'll give us just enough points to win the formula 2 championship that's the end of the race we'll see you in part four, mate. after the start of the weekend we had that is a miracle for jack aiken the hwa race lab team Great win then for the Uni Virtuosi team today. Tell me, Davide, what was the key to this success? I think they kept a clean head. That's why they won today. Smooth, steady, everything bad that happened to them, they handled it calmly and professionally. That's what let them focus on getting the best out of everything else. The car, the strategy, they managed to keep out of trouble the whole way round. Welcome then to the podium, our top three drivers. What a great effort from them today in a very difficult race. So a race win isn't quite enough for Guan Yu Zhou to seal the championship, but it is 25 points in the bank nonetheless. A second place is a decent way to end the season for Richard Vashaw and Teo Porcher ends his rookie year with P3. After this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's tape. With that result, Uni Virtuosi secure the team's championship title. They have been truly outstanding since the very first round of this thrilling championship. Meanwhile, a strong weekend from ART this time out, and they improve their position in the championship. After all this drama, you'll be mad not to join us for the next race. We hope to see you then. Take care. What a season. I'm lost, lost for words about just this, this whole season. Wow. It's been crazy. One you, Joe. There was a critical moment for him. Got a great start and uh, he was able to take the lead, uh, I think, on the run into the first corner. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have time to get uh, many replay cameras uh, from this final race, but yeah, and there was also uh, unfortunately that little moment uh, at the start um, where I had to uh, jump forwards uh, a few seconds just here. Uh, actually, you know, it would have made sense if I just grabbed this uh, from the highlights reel. Hmm. 
Well, there you go. I, I didn't do that, but it's too late now. It's actually not, but then I have to go and re-record the whole voice thing because it will, you know, have to fill more time with what I'm saying. And yeah. I'm just rambling at this point. I should be talking about the race because that was crazy. Um, we uh, made a strong start. That really was uh, probably the biggest thing to gain so many places on lap one. Uh, saved our championship because with Guan Yu Zhou taking the lead, uh, I thought we had no chance. Um, but gaining that many places off the off the start line uh, was was what saved it for us. Um, and then yeah, we just managed to chip away and and take the places as we needed them. Um, eventually, we moved ourselves up into fifth and, and put it beyond doubt. Uh, regardless of fastest laps uh, and which way they fell. Uh, we did get the fastest lap in the end, so we won the championship by five points, but like I said, if Guan Yu Zhou took that fastest lap, uh, we would have won it uh, by just one uh, point, so that's why that was so important for us to get fifth place. But uh, yeah, I guess that's the uh, last Formula 2 race I'll be doing uh, on this game, uh, most likely. Um, I'll be uh, focusing, you can see the damage on the nose there, <laughs> to the, of the car. Um, I'll be uh, focusing now on uh, getting through the current uh, season of my team. Uh, and then, uh, depends when that finishes, I'm thinking about doing a driver career. Because um, I always like to do those, uh, so I'll potentially be doing that. Um, but yeah, there is no next time uh, for Formula 2. Uh, as uh, that is the last race of the season, we've done two championships. Uh, as we uh, usually do uh, on each game, one uh, in each uh, era of cars. But uh, anyway, there we have it. A championship trophy uh, for our efforts uh, in Formula 2 this year. And uh, we will add that uh, to the trophy cabinet. F2 Drivers' Championship 2021. Uh, we've got that trophy now uh, in the bag. But uh, that is uh, just about it uh, for this one. So... I will just say thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I know this was a really long video, so uh, feel free to give us some feedback in the comments. I would really appreciate it. But uh, other than that, I will see you in the next video.